Hello and welcome to you a, another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm taking a look at the 4th Doctor issue 5 of 5 um, so it's the last issue uh, from the 4th Doctor, it's not continuing on or anything which part of me is alright with, another part of me is a bit like ah oh, that's annoying um, but another part of me is like well to be fair he is regarded as the most popular classic series Doctor and he was the long running, the, the most the longest running doctor, he's played the part for seven years, uh, and that, and, uh, so, you know, the alternative media stuff, you know, it just oversaturates his tenure personally, or his character personally, uh, but for doctors like Colin, Sylvester, McGann especially, you know, getting comic books and, you know, big finish stuff, you know, is magnificent because it fleshes out their characters whilst they couldn't have had that chance on TV um, unfortunately but you've got the fourth doctor there on the front cover with this lantern the sword there it's very dramatic very um, uh, yeah dramatic atmospheric um, the Doctor Who logo there New Adventures with the fourth doctor issue 5 as I say Titan Comics there fourth doctor still there Doctor Who some of the people behind it. Third Doctor um, issue 1 advertisement Star Wars advertisement thing uh, Jumper Twee type thing uh, like some panels of the Third Doctor thing the fact that you can get them on iPad and tablets and stuff. Some of the other issues from the Doctor Who line uh, the variant covers which I would have really liked this one personally uh, whereas that's obviously the cover we got I quite like that one as well, the iconic sort of pose for Tom. Uh, I just don't like how he's been drawn, like face-wise there, personally. Uh, what's out from Titan Comics this month? Or what should be out, he says, because I know that that's taken ages to come out. Issue 1 of the 3rd Doctor, again. Uh, Doctor Who, the 4th Doctor, name of the, the sort of series, part 5, writers, artists, colorists, letterists, and so on. Um, I really like this sort of ending. The end to the last issue is good, but as all, as an end to the overall thing, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was a bit like luster and a bit meh. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, um, I do like how there's this, this guy's Harry Sullivan... Uh, Harry Sullivan's grandfather, or great grandfather, uh, and that. So they've met, like his mum, and oh, it's like great grandmother and stuff. I quite, I quite like that. It's a nice little sort of paradoxical, timey wimey sort of fun little thing there. Uh, sort of done well as well. You know, it's not well. It's a bit overcomplicated, or it's a bit iffy. Oh, it's a bit like you know, it makes the continuity a bit screwed up, but. It's still a little bit, a little bit of fun, you know. Uh, Bio on the TARDIS, the Doctor, Sarah, previously. Contacts for Titan Comics uh, website, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, I just didn't like this one because it just felt very sort of all over the place, you know, like, like the rest sort of built up, or built up, and then it kind of went sort of just randomly to the side all of a sudden went off this sort of detour like this area and aspect where I didn't I didn't really want it to go or I didn't I didn't think it would go that way and it wasn't because I didn't think it would go that way that it was bad it was just unexpected but in a very jarring and sort of unexpected in a jarring and almost I won't go so far to say uncomfortable way but very much made me feel like it was disjointed from the rest of the issues personally I mean here we get a brilliant amount of uh, facial expressions from the lovely Tom Baker or drawing of Tom Baker which is sensational the the lexicon the way he talks is uh, and his and his body language is just to a T I think but my only gripe is as a dyslexic person who finds it not the easiest to read um, you know, all these reams of, 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 of bits like this, you know, are a bit difficult to, uh, read, you know, at, at times, you know, 
uh, and that. So I think if you, um, depending on your level of uh, reading, I think this might be a miss. Even if you are a big Fourth Doctor fan, maybe you might want to miss this one. I don't know, uh, but it's up to you. Um, there's no harm in trying, I guess, unless you get really frustrated and annoyed. Um, like I used to when I was finding it difficult to read books and stuff uh, when I was younger. Um, yeah, you've got this picture there, or image there, and you got him sort of scratching his hair, sort of like fondling it. Uh, and then you've got him hitting himself type thing, and then you've got him like, what? It's these eyes, man. Of course, how could I be so stupid? Ah, well... I see. Of course. You know, of course it was that thing. Of course. And that. Um, I do like the colour here. Like, it makes it just look a bit different. But it kind of took me out of the uh, sort of comic, you know. Well, I say that, but then again, it's green here. But it's, yeah, it's just a bit all over the place and a bit jarring and a bit bit much as well. You know, the story is a bit, bit heavy-handed, to say the least. Um, it would probably help if between issue 4 and 5 that they'd have come out sooner rather than later because there has actually been a big gap between issue 4 and issue 5 coming out. Uh, then again, I will... I, I know I've said this countless times, but I really do, with the 4th Doctor ones at least, want to read them back to back and then do an overall uh, sort of summary of the series and see if actually the reason why I don't like this is just because I couldn't... You know, I, I wasn't immediately reading issue 4 and then issue 5. And maybe if I do that, you know, smoothly read all five issues back to back, that it would make this a better reading experience and a f more fluid and there'd be more fluidity and more of an immersive, continuous uh, journey from point A to B instead of this sort of stopping and starting one, you know. Uh, I'd say that... But, Previously was good, but I thought it was a bit naff, you know, personally, like, it it gives you a bit of an idea of what happened last time, but that's about it, but, like, even so, there was so much content, and there's so much stuff to get through, I think the thing is, they're appealing to classic Who fans more than new Who fans, and so I think the stories are a lot more heavy-handed, but in the same in the same way that the classic series sometimes fell at the seams towards the end to wrap everything up, because it would go up and up and up and up and up. Like, that's my major gripe. Spoiler alert for my eventual Pyramids of Mars review, but that's my major gripe with Pyramids of Mars, the fact that everything's so good and it goes up and up and up and up and up to the point where it's like you've built this such great, formidable opponent that anything, how the Doctor defeats the the opponent is just going to feel like a cop-out and a bit of a letdown. You know, you've got dynamic poses with the fourth Doctor and interesting stuff happening. Like, it visually looks nice. It's just, I don't... I didn't think it was the, the best story ever. Or this issue in particular, anyway. But then again, I might have liked the previous ones. I can't fully remember. It's been a while since I've read the, all the other ones. Um, one thing I do like, though, is the mercy of the Doctor. Um, you know, the, the merciful side, you know, he's giving the, the, the sort of Medusa creature a chance again, a second chance. Uh, and that, you know, just in, just it's just another indication of the fact that no matter how vindictive and evil these malevolent aliens are, you know, one of them could have a gun to the Doctor and he'd j just discharge the gun throw it across the room and just shake the person's hand and be like, would you like a jelly baby? Would you like a jelly baby? Or would you like a jammy dodger? I feel like having a jammy dodger. Do you know what I mean? And um, and that, and it's just, you know, no matter how evil something is, he still sees the beauty in it or the, the niceness of it. Um, there's a bit of a time loop where it kind of goes back full circle to um, the first issue or the events of the first issue and that, like, what happens now sets motion of what happens in the past. I'd go so far to say maybe a bootstrap par paradox. Uh, I think to my understanding of what the bootstrap paradox is. I mean, again, the art is nice. It's just the context of the story was a bit <sighs> hazy and a bit all over the place and a bit... It was a rough read. It was a rough read. It wasn't the most fluid and gentle fluid. fluid the fluidity of it wasn't 
brilliant, you know, it wasn't as immersive as, say, the Ninth Doctor issue 6 or some of the other Ninth Doctor ones that I've read, or 8th, or even the first issue of the Third Doctor, unfortunately, it wasn't as immersive, engaging, and easy to read, for me at least, but then again, you might be different, so I don't know, um, would I recommend this? Of course I would, for a big Fourth Doctor fan, yes, but... I'll be honest, depending on your reading skill, you might want to skip this one, you might want to still pick it up, I have no idea, it, you, only you know how well you are or aren't good at reading and it's totally up to you whether or not you buy it, uh, but yeah, that has been my review of The Fourth Doctor, Issue 5, thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.